But I want to start with a bit of a brief story about two fellows who decided to go fishing. And they didn't have a boat, and they heard there was excellent fishing, but it was about a 200, 250 kilometre trip to this fishing place where you were guaranteed to catch a fish. So they went, they hired a boat, they hired all the fishing equipment, rods, nets, or whatever else they used, and off they went. They sat in the boat with a line hanging over the side of the boat for some time. And finally, one of the men pulled in a fish that was just, only marginally, but it was just over the legal limit. And that's the only fish they caught all day. On the way home, one fellow said to his friend, he said, you know that fish cost us over $200? His friend said, gee, I'm glad we didn't catch any more. <laughs> <laughs> so we're still talking about fish. There are so many fishing tales. There are so many fishing stories. But tonight's story, it, in some senses, it almost sounds a bit fishy. And you know, as you look at this, this statement, it, it smells fishy or sounds fishy. I actually did a bit of looking around to see what that really means. And look, I think I've mentioned to you before, I don't eat any seafood, so I, I don't know. I don't like the smell of it. But they tell me if you can smell it, it's old fish. Is that right? <laughs> if you can really smell it, you shouldn't buy it. No, I think, I think that could be right. That, well, that's what I read, so I don't know. I'm stick with it. So it smells fishy. Fresh fish smells like the sea. Does it? Fresh no, fish smells like fish. Okay, fresh fish smells like the sea, stale fish smells like fish. There you go, you have it now. So, if it smells fishy, or what about if it sounds fishy? There's actually, that's, that's how we, you know, something fishy about that. Mm. You heard that statement? Yeah, it's suspicious. Suspicious, that's the word. It doesn't seem, it's almost too good to be true, it can't be wrong. So, in a ninth story, is a bit about the fish. Let me read it to you. It's in Matthew's Gospel, and we're reading from verse, uh, chapter 17, verse 34. Matthew's Gospel, 17, 24, did I say, did I say 24, did I say 34? 24. <laughs> so, it's 24 to the end of the chapter, which is uh, 28. <laughs> <laughs> this, all the answers are in there. So, on their arrival in Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax came to Peter and asked him, Doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Oh, yes, he does, Peter replied. Then he went into the house. But before he had a chance to speak, Jesus asked him, What do you think, Peter? Do kings tax their own people or the people they have conquered? They tax the people they have conquered, Peter replied. Well then, Jesus said, the citizens are free. However, we don't want to offend them, so go down to the lake and throw in a line. Open the mouth of the first fish that you catch and you will find a large silver coin. Take it and pay the tax for both of us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Does that sound a bit fishy? Yeah. Now, uh, before I go anywhere with this, uh, I've never actually spoken, uh, I just had it right before, I've never actually preached on this passage before, but I found it quite fascinating as I've been digging around looking at it. It's, do you realise this is only recorded in Matthew's Gospel, and it's about tax. Now, Matthew was a tax collector, as we know. So maybe that's the reason that Matthew included it, because he was interested in paying tax. Maybe, I don't know. But the other interesting thing about this particular story is this. It's one of the, I think, it, it, it probably is the only miracle that we see recorded in the scriptures that we don't see the result of. Did you pick this up? Jesus said, go and catch a fish and pay the temple tax. Now we don't know that Peter actually did that. We can assume that he did, but we don't know. The scriptures don't tell us 
just found that quite an interesting uh, bit of information, a bit of trivia. The temple tax was uh, a small fee, two drank beer or uh, one shekel, that was due to, to be paid to the temple for maintenance of the temple, for the offerings that were sacrificed and all of those sort of things. It was actually instigated right back in Moses' day. So it's, it's something that happened right through for many, many centuries, many, many years. So it was an expectation of the Jews. Now this is not to be confused with any of the Roman taxes. This is a Jewish tax on the Jewish people for the purpose of maintaining the building. Remember it was the tabernacle when it was introduced and then it became the temple. So it was maintenance and also for the uh, sacrificial offerings, the animals. Now as we dig around in this passage of scripture, it becomes more and more interesting. Let me read, I want you, with that information at hand, it's only a short reading, so I'll read it to you again. On their arrival in Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax came to Peter and asked him, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Oh yes he does, Peter replied. Then he went into the house. But before he had a chance to speak, Jesus asked him, what do you think, Peter? Do kings tax their own people? Or, or the people they have conquered. Or they tax the people they have conquered, Peter replied. And we'll go to this, the rest of it in a moment. I want you to look at this scripture. It's quite an interesting piece of um, scripture. <laughs> it is. So they've been to Capernaum. You know, there's been a lot happening and we've been talking about some of the things that have happened during the past few weeks. So remember last week we spoke about the transfiguration where Jesus took James and John and Peter up onto the mount and before their eyes Jesus was shining bright and who was with them Moses and Elijah you should remember that and Peter in his in his way said we should build three shelters here and I had a conversation with a few people during the week, and I was meant to mention it last week. Have you ever been in that position where you sort of don't know what to do, but you feel as though you have to do something? That's what was going on here. So, anyway, they've come down from the mountain now, and here they are in Capernaum, and Peter has been confronted by these uh, tax agents from the temple saying, Why? <coughs> Does your master not pay the temple tax? It didn't quite say that, but it almost says that. It was a confrontation. Why did they come to Peter? Now, I, th I think there's two reasons here. Because Jesus didn't live anywhere, he didn't have a home, but Peter did. And if you go to Capernaum, you can still see the remains of Peter's home. You can walk around the, just the, the low walls. So, because Peter owned a home, they knew where he lived. And so it was probably easier to confront Peter rather than Jesus. Jesus was, well, he actually gave him some very interesting replies, didn't he? You know, who should I pay the tax to? Whose face is on the coin? Remember that? That's a bit further on actually. But, but Jesus was able to answer them in ways that confounded them. So I think that's why they went to Peter. And Peter said, oh yes, he pays the tax. You know, as I read this, I suspect that Peter wasn't sure. That he just said, blurting out, yes he does. Because he went inside immediately. And he was about to talk about it with Jesus, but this is where it really gets interesting. Did you actually pick that part up in the scriptures? Before he had a chance to speak, the scripture says, Jesus asked him, I want to say this, that Jesus knows all things. Jesus knows what's going on. Not just in here, but in our lives. Jesus is aware. He wasn't at the front door. He was probably in the back. Whatever he may have been doing. It wouldn't have been an overheard conversation, but Jesus knew why these men were there to collect that temple tax. <coughs> Two great men. Now, that's 
I've actually read various reports of the value of a draft meter. Uh, most of the commentators would say it's about a day's wage. Some would say it's about a dollar's worth. Some even say it's about 60 cents worth. Doesn't matter. It wasn't a huge sum of money, not like an income tax, but it was a tax nonetheless on the Jewish people. But Jesus said to Peter, if a king asks for tax, does he tax his own family or the people he has conquered? Now, the first question I would ask you is the Queen of England pay tax? Do you know? She doesn't. She doesn't? No. She is exempt from tax. However, you may or may not be aware that she voluntarily pays the, the equivalent amount to the government. It's not tax, but whatever she would earn uh, from her income producing properties or whatever, you know, appearances or whatever else it would be, she voluntarily gives the equivalence of the income tax to the government to avoid confrontation, to avoid criticism, to be included. I wonder if this is not part of what Jesus is saying. Did you see that? Jesus said down here, I don't want to offend them. You know, as I look at Jesus, Jesus wasn't worried about offending people. And yet here, he didn't want to offend anyone or offend these people. I think there's a lot more here for us to discover. The first thing that I pick up about this is this, about this point is this. And I think this is the main point of this whole reading. There are some other points I'll bring out directly. But I think this, if we're going to look at something, this is the main point. I think many of us become so um, het up about small things that are uh, perhaps we could say are insignificant. And our attitude and our outlook may really turn people off of Jesus. They may not be the best, it may not be the best way of responding in the given circumstances. Oh, I think I'm guilty of that. I don't know whether you are or not, but you know. Something gets you and you hold on to it and you don't want to let it go until it's resolved. But in the order of things, it's pretty small. You ever been there? No one's agreeing with you. Oh, well, you're all good. That's good. But I think that's the point. That sometimes we become so incensed in some of the small things that don't really matter. You see, what actually happened here is quite an amazing miracle. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, get back to your old job, go fishing, grab a hook and throw it in the water. Now it doesn't say whether it said whether Jesus told him to bait it. We don't know whether it was just a hook, but I imagine there was a bait on the end of it. But just bring the first fish that comes along and open the mouth of the fish and the coin will be in there. This confounds scientific uh, imagination or, or scientific, scientists don't imagine, do they? Scientific research, you can't research that. You can't guess that. This is a miracle. You know, I once heard a, a preacher many years ago try to explain the way all the miracles in the scriptures. Well, it was a bit airy fairy, to be honest, in my mind. You know, this just happened or that just happened. But you try this. You go out into the sea and throw in a fishing line, catch a fish, open the mouth, and find the right coin at that moment. You see, I believe God is a God of provision. God is a God of perfect provision. Now somewhere along the line, this fish had swallowed a coin. Maybe there was a fisherman out there leaning over the side of the boat, and a coin fell out of his pocket. I don't know. Or maybe a boat sunk, and there were some coins in it, and the fish was attracted by this uh, shiny coin and just swallow I don't know. But this I know, that Jesus brought Simon uh, or Peter to that fish or the fish to Peter, whichever way you want to look at it. That's who our God is. This is about Jesus revealing himself to be the Son of God. If you don't get excited about that, don't get excited about much. Because this is about God speaking to all people. I will provide. 
Now, the question here is, did he have to? No. No. The words of Jesus. What do you think, Peter? Do kings require their own? Do they tax their own people or the ones they have conquered? They tax the ones they have conquered. In other words, their own family is exempt. You see, all the priests, all those who worked in the temple or in religious, I use that word loosely, duties were exempt from the tax. And you know, as we look at Jesus, when he was 12 years old, where did his parents find him? In the temple. Yeah. And what did he say? What were his words? Do you remember those words? In my father's house. In my father's house. Oh, father's business, yeah. In my father's house. This was his temple. He didn't need to pay the tax. But he wasn't going to get caught up in the uh, petty arguing about it. He's just going to pay it and be done with it. Does that speak to us? I believe it does. But what's more, the coin or the tax was supplied. Wow, it gets pretty interesting. I want to say this. Not everything is worth fighting for. I've half said it before, but not everything is worth fighting for. Some things, I believe, we need to just not conform, that's not the word, but we need, especially when it comes to money, we need to pay our dues. We, as you know, we don't take up an offering here, but we have a tin over there that, uh, that pays for the maintenance of the building and uh, we give it a fair bit to be and it's, it's used for the variety of purposes. It's not a temple tax, it's not an obligation, but it's an opportunity. Now, I'm not here to talk about giving because we don't want to do that too much. But, but it's an opportunity and God will honour us if we honour Him. He doesn't let us down. He is a God of provision. I don't know about going and catching fish and finding a note in it. But see, one of the things that, or, or, or a coin in, it, in its mouth, but one of the things that Peter could have done here is not being thankful or grateful for that. How many of us, if we'd been in Peter's position, would have said, oh Lord, can I catch another one? And then another one. I could deal with a few more coins this week. Let me just catch a few more. But you know, I believe there needs to be a, 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 just an appreciation of the gifts of God and a thankfulness, a, gratitude, a, a heart of gratitude. And we're trying to create that in our church. But you know, we need to be grateful to God for who He is and for His provision. We need to be grateful in our own, you know, in our own private lives. Absolutely, yeah. You're so right, Karen. It's, it's really being thankful for who our God is. The other thing I get here is that if Peter hadn't done what Jesus had asked him to do, he would never have experienced that miracle. I mean, can you imagine, Peter, when he pulled that fish in? First of all, he would have been surprised to catch that fish so quickly, I imagine. And then when he opened the mouth and found the coin. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. And I guess we'd all ask for another fish. <laughs> but can you imagine? Just think about this for a moment. That God asked, or Jesus in this case, asked Peter to do something which was... Quite strange, quite unusual, but the reward was there. You know, as I look at this passage of scripture, I see when we're asked to do something by our Lord, He is faithful and rewards. That's that's wonderful. There's an old story about a tourist who was travelling around Mexico and he came across a spot in Mexico where there was a hot water spring and a cold water spring, right side by side. The ladies were there in the village washing their clothes in the hot and cooling them, or rinsing them out, in the cool, cold water. And the tourist said to the tour guide, 
these people must be really happy to have this amazing place where they can wash in the hot water and rinse in the cold. And he said, no, they complain because there's no soap with it. <laughs> we're strange lot, we're strange, aren't we, as humans? But it's, that's what happened. I want to say again that God meets our needs as is evidenced here in the scripture. There's an old German proverb, I haven't quoted it for many, many years, but it's a very interesting proverb. God feeds the sparrows, but he doesn't put the wheat in their mouths. Yeah, it doesn't always just happen, but God is a God of provision. If Peter hadn't gone to the sea, hadn't thrown his line into the water, this miracle would not be recorded. Although it might have been, because we don't see the outcome, but I would think that that happened. I would think that this occurred. Peter must have been amazed that this oh. one fish out of the hundreds that were there yeah. had the coin in it. Yeah. If Peter didn't obey Jesus, he'll miss the blessing. Yes. That's right, if you don't obey Jesus, you miss the blessing. And that one fish was the one. Oh, I tell you, you know, we're only just sort of looking at the edge, looking at it as uh, Paul talked about this double mirror. But this is an amazing story. It's almost sounds a bit fishy, but it's the truth because it's in the Word of God. So God meets our needs, but Jesus is the Son of God. It was evident in how He actually led Peter to this uh, uh, was a confirmation of the identity of Jesus. Actually, it is a confirmation of His identity. This actually leads to something else. We, along with Jesus, are heirs of the Father. We, along with Jesus, will inherit everything. Eternal life. We are God's treasured possession. We are God's treasured possession. Thank you, Nadine. But get this point. If we take this word that's in uh, Matthew 17, those who are, if you like, in the business, when the family, don't have to pay the tax. There's no obligation. And then he came along and supplied the need. Jesus did. Mm -hmm. You know, I think this brings us to the point of sin. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glorious ideal. We are sinners saved by grace through faith. But when you actually look at this reading here and ponder it, it's actually talking about salvation. We want to explain a little more because we see puzzled looks on faces. Think about this. <coughs> Sinners are condemned to stand before a God who is perfect, who can't bear sin. God needed someone to stand in the gap, as it were. It was Jesus who provided the means, the way. And so we inherit through Jesus the grace, the mercy, and the freedom that God gives. We don't have to pay the tax of death. You've heard me say it before, I'll say it again tonight, born once, die twice, born twice, die once. When we're born again, when we invite Jesus into our lives, we are set free from the power of sin and death. I think this passage is actually, in a sense, preempting that. But it's such a, a, a miracle. But then again, so is this fact that Jesus would go to the cross in our place. That he would give his all, his life for you and me. What greater miracle is there than that, that we are now free? Very, very, just wonderful, it's powerful, and it speaks to us all. Jesus was exempt from paying the temple tax. But he paid it. 
Jesus was exempt from the power of sin because he was sin free, but he bore our sins upon himself. Friends, as we open up this passage of scripture, there are some real truths in it. It's an unusual passage of scripture, but it speaks to us very clearly that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And can you imagine Peter, as I said before, as he opened up that mouth of that fish and discovered a coin? Can you imagine how he would have gone to the temple and paid it? Someone said this. He probably didn't clean it. It was probably a filthy, fishy smelling coin that he was very happy to hand over to the temple uh, tax people because most of those people, like a lot of people today, don't want to pay tax. But, you know, we pay tax to our government so that our society is better. Yeah, we grumble about the amount of tax we pay, but as Christians, I think this passage actually speaks to us about our taxes that we do have an obligation, that sometimes we might quibble over this or that. But Jesus said, I'll supply the means. You just do as I command. Wow. I, uh, I tell a story often of a fellow I met some years ago who needed some medical work done, and he received uh, uh, some equipment for that medical work, and it came to him twice. He actually had two sets of equipment. And it was expensive equipment. And his comment to me, oh, it doesn't matter, it's free anyway. But you see, the point is it's not free. Someone's paying for it. You know, our, our society is a little bit twisted and warped. And that gives us the, I suppose, the um, thought, well, why should I pay taxes? Because it's wasted. No, I think Jesus is saying to us, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and unto God that which is God's. Amen. That's the message for tonight. Amen. There's a lot in this little piece of, these few verses. And you know, we can probably dig out a whole lot more. But it's a cold night. But I just want to encourage you, when you go back out into your week, that you just seek God's wisdom and guidance. Be faithful in the call upon your life. Listen to what He is instructing you to do. And when you do it, you will be blessed out of your socks. When you do it, miracles will happen. When you do it, others will be blessed. Who would think that that conversation outside of Peter's house could lead to such an amazing discovery of who Jesus is? Will you join me in prayer? Let's pray. Father God, as we just reflect upon that amazing word from Matthew chapter 17, Lord, there is still a lot of truth there that needs to be uncovered. And uh, as we reflect upon that, I just pray, Lord, that during this week, we would, you would just reveal to us more and more of what is in that scripture. But more than that, Lord, we just pray that, pray that we would be able to apply it to our lives so that our lives would be lived out according to your will and your desire. Our desire is to be your people in this place, not caught up in the pettiness, but being generous, by being faithful, <coughs> by listening to what you say and by responding. So Lord, we can't do that on our own, we just need your strength, the courage that comes from knowing you as Lord and Saviour, and Lord, we just need wisdom that comes from you and from you alone. So be with us, for we pray in Jesus' name. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the presence of his Holy Spirit, be with us this night and always. Amen. As the worship team come forward, I just want to encourage you that if you're not able, and I know not everyone is,